Hi folks, we bought a pair of Haas VF6 SS machines. So why did we buy these machines? It's actually really awesome. Uh, we reached the point with our fixture plate production where we needed to add a second vertical machining center uh, so that we have process specific machines. Uh, we used to make all of them on our Haas VM3 uh, and we had to switch the fixturing between OP1 and OP2. This will give us the ability to really uh, increase our efficiency by having dedicated machines. We bought the sixes because we also need to be able to offer larger fixture plates, both for vertical machine centers, but also for, for routers and things like CMMs. We actually thought about buying VM6s, but when you buy a VM3, you're getting the step up in the casting or frame size. That doesn't exist in the, in the VM6s. Uh, the VM6 and the VF6 are essentially the same casting, the same frame. They're still really large, really heavy machines. Uh, these were about 22,000 pounds, I think, shipping weight. And when you get to larger machines, the speed does matter. We're not in a rush, but we've had such a great experience with our VF2 SS that these machines seem to fit the bill. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. This is the process of us rigging, unpacking, and commissioning these machines. VF2 coming over kind of where my desk used to be, and the VM3 will get scooted over, and then the two VF6s will go on the right half of that bay. Um, we're just taking our time, making sure we're safe, and uh, one step at a time. pushing the VF2 kind of to the left versus having it centered along this hallway. Uh, the hallway being where you'll have uh, VF6s on each side and then a VM3 and then UMC. Um, and it has to do with making sure we've got enough room on the back side to open the electronics door, pull the uh, coolant tray out, get the chip in and out. And then in this case now, we've kind of got it, it looks kind of like it's pushed up against the Daytron. So uh, the VF2 is so easy to move though. Uh, we think we like it there, so we're going to leave it there, uh, pull this rigging skates out from underneath it. Uh, Jared's finishing up a plate right now, and then we're going to scoot the VM3 down. Uh, luckily, it only has to go uh, you know, about eight feet in one direction, and we'll see what that feels like.
It is Wednesday, so the machines got here at about 10 a.m. Monday. Uh, Monday afternoon and then yesterday morning we moved them and rigged them into place. You then have to hook up air and power uh, before the Haas tech comes and they are scheduled to come tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. Um, I actually don't know if it's going to be one or two people or if it's going to take them one or two days, but fun fact, uh, there's actually a lot of work to do. When you buy a vertical machine center, uh, expect to get a huge crate that you've got to deal with and quite a few boxes as well. But otherwise the machines are in place and we are uh, we're ready to go. Lastly, there are four settings that we recommend you either check or change, or at least be aware of on the Haas control. First one is setting 15. This should be defaulted to on, and it basically makes sure that the H and the T values match. In other words, the height value and the tool value match in your cam and your G code. If you don't know what that means, don't worry about it. It's a more advanced thing when you'd ever have to have those separate. But for me, from a safety standpoint, I want those matched under almost all scenarios. Setting number 76, disable the control panel tool release button. Don't know why this is there. No, 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 no. Setting 81, we disable the tool change at startup. Can somebody tell me why this is even there? I find that it startles me and I don't like it, so we don't need to do a tool change when the machine first starts up in the morning. And lastly, setting 163, disable that 0.1 jog feed rate button. Again, don't know why this is there. In fact, I've even heard it doesn't even jog any faster. It just adds more values to the jog wheel. And what I don't like is when you jog and you stop jogging and there's some code. So disable that button. They are done. The last thing that they'll do is use an indicator sweep a 10 inch circle. And while that's a really important test, there's a lot more value in being able to test that a few weeks, a few months down the road because the machines, they haven't really been run. They haven't made parts. They don't have coolant in it. And in some cases, they're still kind of getting settled in the floor. And it kind of reminds me of that first lesson we learned when we bought our first VMC, which is that they're not perfect. Uh, even though these machines weigh 10, 20,000 pounds, a friend of ours likes to say, they're like wet noodles. Everything twists and distorts and flexes. Uh, when we took the Richard King, uh, I call it the scraping class, but it was really a machine rebuilding class. Uh, we talk a lot about that and how cast iron is incredibly flexible and in fact it's adjusting the six or in this case eight feet on the machine under the casting to get that level in so our plan is we're going to commission these machines we're going to get our fixtures our setup workflows built i'm super excited for that and then after probably a month we're going to kind of recheck uh, our level and our tram and what i'm thinking we might do uh, is try to get these things laser calibrated uh, the beauty of lasers is you don't need a huge massive piece of say granite or parallel uh, which is incredibly expensive. These are 64 inch by 32 inch travel XY. Uh, laser can do that incredibly uh, accurately. So we'll keep you folks posted on that. Otherwise, uh, we are really excited. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you learned something. Take care. See you soon.